Oh my gosh! So today the goal is to make some carbon fiber pieces for the front end of the Camaro since we knocked all the other ones off on the mountain. So if we need some new ones, we gotta get them built. The uh, hardest part that we keep running into that is much more avoidable when we're doing the infusions is the dock on fraying. But on the wet lay, the fraying is just absolutely a nightmare. It continually causes problems. We're just trying to go for a, a part that's strong and uh, light and stiff. So the little cosmetic stuff isn't really going to matter much. Anybody looks like a little kid compared to Mike, except for your baby draft. Wetting the parts out and then sticking them on has its advantages, but I think it also has some disadvantages. So this one, I guess both of these, we're going to try and just really utilize what we learned from how much it takes to really get it good and wet it out. A lot of times we like to do the infused parts because it pulls the resin through the part consistently and you end up with the perfect amount of resin as long as you have a good vacuum. But with certain molds, you know, like the molds we have here today, they're really not set up for infusion. So if it was an infusion mold, it will have a big flange all around the edges so that we could do uh, bagging film and seal all that stuff up so that we can infuse it. But being that we don't have a mold that's appropriate for that, we're not able to do that, which is why we're doing this wet lay. Look at my dad. I don't know. Is that accurate? Well, we got it all wetted out and layered up and reinforced all the edges. I think, uh, I think it's about as good as we're gonna get it. So now we just get to roll the dice, let it dry overnight and come back tomorrow and hope like hell it turned out better than the other ones. So let's see what happens. because this thing looks freaking awesome. I'm super happy with that. I think... No, man. Like, it's got a few little pinholes, but... Man, for a part we really weren't worried at all about the, the carbon finish of it, I'm super stoked. We've got a few dry spots, but man, even look up here. We got it pushed in. Like, that's... Crazy! Like it's so hard to get these corners. Getting all of this, not only is it is it wet, it's not really even dry, but we actually have the 90 degree corners. I mean, this is a four-sided box, and we we were able to get it pushed in there, and it held. So, super super excited about that. That and that are very very hard to get the carbon to push in there, and then not try and pull back out. I think this is a big win. I think from here. It's a few tweaks between uh, what we have as a result and really, really, really high, high quality part. And it's still super lightweight, so. So I had no clue what I was doing. The wizard said go and I went, just followed his lead. Well, now that we got the fender all made and it's out of the mold and it's dry, the big question is, being that it's carbon fiber, is how much does it weigh? So. We went and got our, our little shipping scale, and I'm gonna teeter this thing on here and see how much it weighs. It weighs eight pounds, 
the uh, we stuck all the old fender bits on there that we still have, which isn't all of them, and that was 13 pounds. So we're gonna gain five pounds a side. I would say it's it's definitely not heavy. It's not uh, it's not the lightest fender on the planet, but it's not the heaviest by a long shot. And we did make it kind of thick with a, two layers of 12K so that it would be nice and stiff and rigid. So I think I'm happy with that. 